You want to do as much damage as possible as a demo lock, then you need to know this. So from log reviewing, it seems like something that pretty much every top demo warlock does, but most demo warlocks don't do this at all. They hardly ever use this ability. Or like me, I thought that you just kind of had to squeeze it in whenever, but there is actually a way to do it to where you can min-max the amount of Shadow Cleaves that you get. Uh, Shadow Cleave has a pretty big spell power modifier, so that kind of matters. It can do a good amount of damage, and so you definitely want to min-max this. Here, this footage that I'm using is from post Unholy Death Knight nerf Nax, and so these fights are going to last really long, and Ulduar isn't out yet in this in this footage. I'm just, you know, it's the two days between Nax and Ulduar, but... Um, a lot of people, they will go in and they'll use Corruption, Curse of Agony, or Curse of Doom, uh, along with Immolation Aura right off the bat. And that's a pretty bad idea because you can use Immolation Aura. You only have one of it per meta, and so you might as well just use it whenever your Shadow Cleave is up. And you want to use that same global to Shadow Cleave and Immolation Aura. Whereas uh, most people, they rocket boot in, they do all those things, they maybe do one Shadow Cleave. And then they, you know, maybe get another one later on when they're refreshing Corruption. Uh, corruption is going to be your bread and butter for Shadow Cleaving. It's the easiest thing to kind of weave in. And it does scale with haste due to the Glyph of Quick Decay. So that includes haste from Bloodlust. And you're probably going to be Bloodlusting it when you're when you're in meta like 99% of the time. You want to meta while you have Flust. And so because of that, your Corruptions are going to be pretty quick. They're going to be like 8 seconds or something. Cooldown on Shadow Cleave is 6 seconds. So... It's pretty easy for you to kind of weave it in there. Uh, depending on your amount of haste, you could also, you know, possibly just do it every corruption and not really lose out on that much DPS. But it's something that you should be aware of. And if you can delay a dot by, you know, if you're going to throw up Curse of Agony, just like wait two seconds to get Shadow Cleave up also. And it's probably not going to cost you any damage. It's just going to get you a free Shadow Cleave. Um, so this is something that pretty much... I would say 95% plus of Demo Locks just never even think about using this ability. Uh, but it's pretty easy to use. You can have it go off automatically by just macroing all of your abilities, particularly your instant cast, because macroing it to Shadow Bolt, it's not going to happen while you're Shadow Bolting. So, you know, it's kind of useless to put it in Shadow Bolt, but I still do in case if, you know, one just comes out or I'm hitting Shadow Bolt while I'm moving, while I'm in meta, then I'll do a Shadow Cleave. But... Ideally on Corruption, on Curse of Agony, on Curse of Doom, on Immolation Aura, you want that stuff bound to slash start attack and slash cast Shadow Cleave. So that way you make sure that you get it off and you get it on cooldown while you're spamming that ability. And then the ability actually goes off the instant cast. It doesn't matter when in the global you actually do the Shadow Cleave or do the auto attack because, um, you know, you could be out of range of the boss and do a Corruption and right at the very end of the global of the Corruption you can get in range and then get off that auto attack, which does the Shadow Cleave, and then you start a Shadow Bolt right after that. It's totally fine. Any point in the one second global, all you have to do is auto attack with Shadow Cleave queued up like a Heroic Strike, and it will go off. And so it's a pretty easy and uh, quick way to increase your damage. And thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like it if you enjoyed or found it helpful, and subscribe for more.